Okay, so today's topic is lightweight message authentication codes and authenticated encryption. So we will start with message authentication codes. Then I will talk about lightweight uh, message authentication code standards. Then we will combine this idea with encryption and obtain authenticated encryption. Then I will talk about some standards by talking about Caesar competition. Then I will explain how the ASCON algorithm works, which is the winner of the NIST lightweight crypto authenticated encryption competition. So this is the roadmap. So let's first start with message authentication codes. So message authentication codes are not for encryption, OK? This is not an encryption algorithm, but this is for message verification. So this is not an encryption algorithm. Like cryptographic hash functions, they weren't an encryption algorithm too. And message authentication codes are not encryption too. So idea is as follows. Communicating parties share a secret key, like we did in block ciphers. And then uh, they compute an authentication tag T using this secret key. So idea is as follows. Sender wants to send a message, for instance, M. And this is as plain text. This is, there is no encryption, OK? But from this message, they calculate a tag called T using the secret key and concatenate this T to their message and send it to the person. So when the person receives the message and the tag, they also calculate the tag of this message using the secret key. If that tag matches this one, then this means that the message is not modified during the you know, transit. So receiver can verify whether the message has been altered or not by computing the tag T prime from the message and check if T equals to T prime. Okay, so ID is basic. So let's see what kind of attacks we can have. Since there's a secret key involved, of course the attacker would like to capture the secret key, right? So ID is as follows. You listen to the communication and you capture a lot of messages with their tags, okay? So attacker doesn't know the secret key, but captures and message tag payers. So if your uh, message authentication code is good, it should be infeasible for an attacker to recover the K with secret key K that was used to create these tags, right? So similar like what we did for block ciphers, but here there is no encryption. Instead, we produce a small tag like a hash function output, but don't forget that hash functions don't use a secret key. Here we are using a key. So this is why sometimes people refer to message authentication codes as hash functions with a secret key. Sometimes this definition is correct, but it cannot be generalized like this. So there's another way to attack this system. So key recovery is one scenario, but, but make forgery is another attack type. So a message authentication codes are shortened as MAC. Please don't forget, uh, don't confuse it with the MACs we use in networks because that is media access control. This is completely different, okay? It's something else. So assume a scenario like this, you again uh, capture N message take pairs like M1, T1, MN, TN. So it should be infeasible for an attacker to generate a valid message pair take M prime, T prime, where M prime is not one of these messages you captured. So you are forging a tag for a message that is, hasn't been sent before, okay? So if you can do this, we also break the system. This shouldn't be possible, so it should be infeasible. So key recovery attack should require two to the K operations, right? Because the you know uh, K is, secret key is K bit. Key recovery attack leads to make forgery because if you capture the key, then you can generate any messages and tags, right? But for a weak scheme, it may be possible to forge a tag without receiving the or recovering the secret key. If the message authentication tag T is of T bits, a successful MAC forger should require two to the T operations. Okay, this is the security way of looking at it. So let's see some examples. Recall the CBC mode of operation for block ciphers. Now we will convert it to a MAC. So here we will see some examples where we convert block ciphers and make them message authentication codes, okay? So assume that we have AES here. This is an encryption algorithm, so it uses a secret key and takes the plain text. So in order to produce tag, what we do is as follows. This is the message. Recall that message authentication code is not encryption. So we send this message as a plain text, but from here, using the CBC MAC, we will generate a tag, 
Okay. And we will also send this tag with the message. So it works like this. It is like CBC encryption. You take the first message block, exit it with IV, encrypt it with the secret key, but you don't produce any cipher text. Again, this is not an encryption, but you take it here, exit it here, continue this way. And finally, you make a final a finalization process here and produce a tag. So motivation is as follows. Last cipher tag block is dependent on the previous plain text block in CBC mode. CBC Mac appears in FIPS 113 with DES being the underlying block cipher. Final process is generally necessary to avoid forgery attacks. So this is something old and people used it before, but generally we don't use it now. Okay. Uh, CMAC or OMAC is uh, preferred instead of CBC Mac. So CMAC fixes security deficiencies of CBC Mac. And OMAC has two variants. OMEC 1 and OMEC 2, and OMEC 1 is identical to CMEC. So these topics are not that popular, so it is hard to find the documentation for this. But the idea is similar. You use something like CBC MEC, but here you also use the secret key and you derive some further keys and use it to tweak the message last block. So this way you produce some output. So this way, some of the security problems in the CBC MEC is uh, resolved. So let's move on to, so these are uh, message authentication codes generated from block ciphers or encryption algorithms, right? So let's say an example where we create a message authentication code from a hash function. So idea is simple, actually. You have a hash function here, like SHA-256, okay? So this big H, this time is not a block cipher like in the previous pictures, this time it is a hash function. What you do is as follows. You have a message, this, this is the one you need to generate the tag for, right? So it can be something really long, but you concatenate it with your secret key, which is exhort with some kind of a fixed uh, message called iPad, okay? You exhort it, take it with your message, put it in the hash function. So you produce something here. You do the same step this time with a different uh, number, you exhort it. You put it again, the hash function, so this time you say that this is the message authentication code or tag for the message M under the secret key K. So as you can see, since uh, one-way hash functions are hash functions are one way, you cannot go from here to here. Also, since message is sent as the plain text, the attacker knows this. The attacker also knows the tag, but you know since they don't know the secret key they cannot capture the internal part. So for this reason, it is not easy to generate or forge messages where you don't know the, uh, I mean, you forge a tag for a message which hasn't sent before. So uh, also you can see that if your message is really large, at this point you perform the hash function on a large amount of data, but after here, since hash function produces a fixed length output, this part is small. So the second hash function actually is not that much of a problem. Here you do the main work. You kind of keep hiding your steps here, okay? So this is what is referred to as HMAC. And generally, uh, in practice, we have seen many examples where people use it.